So this is the last topic on this little section, diagrams, phase diagrams. Uh, let me introduce you now that you know what's enthalpy. And if you don't know, just check out my previous video, a pressure enthalpy diagram. Uh, it's essentially a graph of pressure versus a specific enthalpy. Why specific enthalpy? Well, of course, we want to know how much enthalpy per unit of mass we can get from that. It will help us a lot to visualize the bell-shaped area pretty similar to the pressure specific volume uh, diagram. And since we are very interested in liquid vapor mixtures, this will be of great help. It's also useful to calculate changes in enthalpy and you know by now that changes in heat are caused or may be caused by changes in enthalpy and work is as well or may be calculated with changes on enthalpy. So that's why we want to calculate this. We want to know how much uh, differences are in order to calculate heat and work. So this is a little diagram I show you. I will have here pressure, specific enthalpy. And once again, it's very similar to that of the liquid, uh, the PV diagram. You have the liquid, you have the bell shaped here of the bell shape and you have this mixture of liquid vapor you have this critical point which is of course you know a line in this case and the isothermal line of it this is one actually this is the critical temperature because it's passing through the critical point but you will have this line which is the isothermal line this maybe I don't know if, you, if this were water this will be 300 something 50 I don't, know, I don't remember this will be less let's say 100 celsius Let's go to an actual diagram. Uh, R refers to refrigerant. 401A is one the name, a specific name. You can see this line right here, which is the uh, how do you say the saturated line. This is liquid. This is gas. This is liquid plus vapor. And this is my critical point. Actually, it's marked. And you cannot see it that much, but you have 0, 10, 20, 30 Celsius. And I'm going to sh explain you later how to read this. But I just wanted to tell you that this is very, very useful. You have pressures, you have enthalpies, and you will be doing later calculations such as uh, if I have this pressure, let's say 100, uh, I don't know, this 10 kilopascals. I have 10 kilopascals and I have a temperature of 60 Celsius, will I have a mixture, will I have a liquid water, or will I have vapor? So you just go to this, you know pressure is constant, so you make your line. You go to the temperature at which you get that, and you will see that if you wanted to cross with 60 Celsius, you will have 60 goes here and then goes out of the bell, so no, you will have a vapor. I'm going to give you way more exercise later, just wanted to show you the pressure enthalpy diagram, which is awesome in my personal opinion. What's up guys, it's me, Chemical Engineering Guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or if I should be adding something, taking out its content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.